for me it's just about being really open and aware of other people you know in this in this time where we're all on our own just having a bit of an awareness the, the great thing about art is that even when you're confined um you're always going to give a response and you know a lot of times the most incredible art is from a reaction from whatever's happening in the world when you're worried it's hard for you to be productive so i'm not pushing my creative work too much but i've been able to do it a little bit every day it's a, a good opportunity for me to uh, realize like as a human being or as a people we cannot decide anything i'm anticipating that that the other side of the pandemic is going to look a, a bit starker than it had for a little bit but it's a crisis so you know it's never managed ideally or they're doing as well as they can, I guess. We're going to want to connect with people. This is all done. We're going to want to go and see shows. We're going to want to sit in theatres with people. We're going to want to go to festivals. In the last video, I was leaving China during the COVID-19 outbreak. And now I'm in Australia and I'm in self-isolation at my parents' home in Tasmania. I do still have a lot of China content that's yet to be released, but first I wanted to talk to some artist friends around the world about how COVID-19 has impacted them. I spoke to friends in the UK, US, China, Germany and Portugal to see how they've been coping with all of the changes that have been happening recently and also about our collective anxiety about what's going to happen to the arts as a result of this crisis. Uh, my name is Jenny Davis. I'm a Welsh theatre maker from Abergavenny um, and I live in Bristol. So I direct um, projects here and there. I'm also a teacher. Um, I do a lot of outreach work. It's not just theatres that put on shows, it's that actually the outreach work for vulnerable people, for young people, for everyone in your community. There is so much more than a theatre does, it's just putting on shows. And so all of that work has just disappeared overnight. I have no income, so that's quite a big change. <laughs> I'm Carlos, I'm Portuguese, I'm based in Lisbon, and I'm a musician. I just released my first album, and I was supposed to go on tour. There was all these um, collaborations that were supposed to happen in the next month or two that obviously won't happen now, but they're postponed. I'm Fiona. I come from China. Now I'm living in Shanghai. And my work is I'm doing jewelry designer because most of my work is cooperated with a factory and uh, they are delayed to open, resume. So for me, it's the only thing I can, I could do at the time, just uh, waiting. My name is Andrew Narvaez. I am a uh, I'm Colombian American here in Los Angeles, California. I uh, pursue a few different artistic endeavors. I do have a day job, and I uh, I work in events at a at a large hotel here in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, I was laid off just yesterday. My name is Sophia Pervilac. Um, I'm a little bit from all over the place, I guess. My dad is French American Swiss, and my mom is German but I grew up most of my life in Switzerland and I'm currently an assistant director at a small theater in Germany. The theaters here in Germany are really well state funded. So even at a small theater like here in Freiburg, I'm still getting my monthly fixed salary that I can really nicely live on in a nice apartment. Hi, my name is Ahmed Maksud. I am from the States, uh, originally born and raised, but my family's from Egypt. Uh, and I currently live in New York City as an actor before the pandemic, working on uh, this new musical, The Visitor, which is based off of the movie that came out about 13 years ago, um, which would have opened at the public and uh, hopefully will continue <laughs> to open at the public once this is over. I'm concerned for the lifeblood of a lot of these theaters. A lot of them are uh, tend to operate on, you know, very, very tight uh, profit lines and profit margins and stuff. And I'm glad that there's conversation around how, um, you know, larger institutions and the government can support us in this time, but it's really scary, I'm not gonna lie. I'm watching a film a day, 
and I'm listening to music, but properly listening, like literally stopping and listening. So once I get this fix, <laughs> I feel very creative. Outside of that, I've honestly been feeling like a kid and reading a lot of comic books and watching a lot of uh, animated films and cartoons. The idea that we should all be staying home basically kind of makes me feel like, like a kid on a Saturday morning again, you know? I've been tying up projects just to make sure that people that I work with can get paid. So there's a lot going around on Facebook about being productive and, and doing stuff. I'm quite used to having to do that like on cue, like being creative, being productive. And I think I'm just gonna try and at least give myself a bit of space so maybe that creative feeling will come from somewhere that I'm not like driving home. Because I've been working like seven days a week um, and never had any free time. Buying a face roller and a diffuser with essential oils and getting an acupressure mat to do meditation on and really use this time to like unwind for myself. I live streamed the other day. I did a mukbang the other day. I came out of Korea and it's essentially, you know, you watch somebody eat a bunch of food. It's like really ridiculous. <laughs> I hit record and I was just eating some Thai food. And then I had this uh, friend of mine who I haven't talked to in probably over a year. He just joined the live stream and we just chatted. In the morning, I exercise a little bit. I keep my sportswear. In the middle of the afternoon, I shower and then I kind of dress up. It, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. What you can also do is like do like accessories, like jewelry or like hair accessories. Put like a nice top. It does, it does help, it does help. I mean, it helps me. <laughs> well, I've been working on monologues, which is the best time to work on monologues because you can just work um, for yourself. And it's a colleague of mine who wrote um, this play about, that's like based on people that live here in Freiburg. I'm also uh, starting a, an online publication, online magazine with a friend who lives in Tokyo, another friend who lives in Miami. We're gonna see a pretty interesting, I think, wave of a different kind of digital artistry I think that's going to come about. I challenge people out there to have at least one piece of art when we're done with this quarantine. My partner Chris has been making a mega mix, <laughs> like, just, like um, DJing uh, something for, for Saturday where people can tune in and, and dance to really silly dubstep versions of film music <laughs> and, and big tunes, as he says. So I spent the bulk of 2019 reading this book called Thinking Fast and Slow, to essentially talking about human behavior. And this pandemic is, is centered almost exclusively these days on our behavior interacting with others. And so to have a better sense of, of why recommendations are made and how we operate under, uh, you know, according to our own human rationality. Not so like highbrow. In, in the UK, we have something called First Dates, which is just, it's a TV program where people go on their first dates in this particular restaurant. And, and I know it's like, <laughs> but it's just about seeing connect, for me, like witnessing stuff that's about connection right now. It's just really comforting. Um, I also have this book, but um, it's called A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. It's all about friendship, really, male, male, male relationships and friendship. And I love that. So I'm, I'm kind of really reaching for stuff that's about connection. Also been watching loads of Gilmore Girls. <laughs> My brother, so we're self-isolating together. He's just releasing his new album. And I had the pleasure to listen to it two nights ago. It's amazing. It's not out yet, but I want to suggest to people to watch and to listen to his music. So the name is Vaya Praia. Probably like queer punk and pop and rock and roll as well. I started reading this book. Um, it's a work of fiction. It's called The Immortalists. And it's this really beautiful story about a group of siblings growing up from like the mid 60s until I think modern day. Each of them found out how they're gonna die. And it's this really beautiful kind of journey of like, well, if your life is predestined, how are you gonna live your life? I don't know, in a weird way, Right now, our lives are predestined because we can't go anywhere. So how are we going to spend our time? How are we going to live our lives? And another book, there is an English version and Chinese version together. Its name is Dong Dong Has a Man of Future, wrote by this uh, American. He's American, a professor. He brought out uh, some 
uh, confused of the Western society. He would like to get answer from this master, from his uh, oriental wisdom. It's this book by Stefan Zweig called uh, Joseph Fouché. And it's about this political figure during the French Revolution. He basically lists all these different like creative geniuses that like wrote their big works during the time when they were in exile, like Cervantes, Nietzsche, Dostoevsky and stuff like that. Only misfortune gives deep insight and foresight into the reality of the world. Hard lesson to be learned, but exile serves as a lesson. So I thought that was very fitting for us. How to support musicians. In Bandcamp, you can just buy the, the artist's music. Normally, they suggest a price, or you can just like pay whatever. In Bandcamp, you can also get the merchandising. And I know a lot of photographers, a lot of musicians, a lot of artists who are selling prints. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Even I'm sure a $5 purchase is just, just going to make their, their day. For my theater, what a lot of audiences are doing is that they're not giving back tickets that they've already bought, but they're getting them exchanged for vouchers. So that's a really good way for the theater to not lose the money um, that they would have otherwise. Purchase a subscription to a theater that might have a season, specifically nonprofit theater uh, and in New York off-Broadway theater. That's the industry that I fear will um, suffer most. You know, there's not a ton of endowment for a lot of these companies. Um, in the same way that there might be for museums, perhaps, and they require audiences physically attending. So there's no way any work can develop while audiences aren't allowed. I guess the way that you can support people is just be aware of like the self-employed people and the artists and the, and actually not just that, but like there's so many homeless people that live in Bristol that now are in a really, it, extremely scary position. There's 125 as well in Bristol, a charity that helps um, sex workers in Bristol as well. That, that will also be really affecting them. It's true, Germany does have a really good social security system, which comes in handy during a crisis like this. But it's a crisis, so, you know, it's never managed ideally or <laughs> they're doing as well as they can, I guess. It's the thing that I'm sitting with at the moment, uh, after the Arts Council did their announcement about how they needed to help people immediately, but how that's going to then impact the next year of arts in the UK. When this all blows over, there's going to be a lot of money missing for those projects. So if you are in a really fortunate position, donating to your local theatre and community organisation, rebuilding like the culture and community of spaces and places. Oh my god, I should do that again. <laughs> it's like video chat thing. I've never done it before. Uh, very soon we'll be having some very weird uh, sketches come out. Men dressed as cats. US, China, Germany. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry.